By rotating the coordinate system before we draw an object, we can draw that thing in any orientation on the screen. Here's my favorite example of a bear drawn with respect to a default coordinate system in the upper left. Notice that the bear is facing in the same direction as the x-axis, and the bear's feet are pointed down along the y-axis. If I translate the coordinate system, I know that the bear will be drawn in this new location, but what if I rotate the coordinate system first? Now when I draw, the bear will still be looking along the x-axis, and its feet will be pointed along the y-axis, but because the coordinates have been rotated, the bear itself will look like it's been rotated as well. As always, the bear I drew last time doesn't change. Now let's translate to a third location. As always, translation occurs with respect to the coordinate system. So x is pointed down and to the right. If I move along the x-axis, I'm going to move down and right. Y is pointing down and left, so if I move along the Y axis, I'll move down and left. In this case, I'm going to move in the negative Y axis. So that's the opposite of the direction Y is pointing. That would be up and to the right. I'll draw my little construction lines to show us where the intersection is, and now let's do the translation. Now our coordinate system is up here, and if I drew another bear, I'd get another bear going down and to the right. But first, I'll rotate this. So now the bear again will be drawn looking along the x-axis. This is the essence of how we use the rotate transformation to orient objects on the screen. The routine you call to make a rotation is simply rotate. Rotate takes a single argument. It's an angle measured clockwise. As with all the routines in processing, angles are in radians. And there's a whole video on radians and degrees if you've forgotten about that stuff or you want to refresh your memory. In a nutshell, people like to work with degrees. So to turn degrees into radians, you just call radians with the number of degrees you want to transform. So this call says, rotate the coordinate system by 65 degrees clockwise. Well, that's this blue arrow. If we do this, the coordinate system gets rotated. And from now on, everything we draw will take place with respect to this rotated system. Let's do another angle. Let's pick something really big, like 240 degrees. That's a huge part of a circle, but it's no problem. Processing will just rotate the coordinate system 240 degrees, and from now on, everything will take place with respect to this system. Let's take a look at how to use rotate to draw a bunch of bears walking down a hill. Here's the picture I would like to make. Three bears walking down a hill. To help me plan, I draw my usual grid behind the picture where each big box is 100 pixels in each direction. Now I need to figure out where the coordinate system should be. I can draw the three coordinate systems like this. So if I can put the coordinate system into each one of these three places, one after the other, and I draw a bear in each of these places, I'll get my picture of three bears. So let's go ahead and do that. First, I'm gonna put a piece of tracing paper over my picture that lets me keep in mind where we're going, but we're going to start from zero. So let's go ahead and put up our initial coordinate system, which is in the upper left. And here's the program that's going to draw this little picture. As usual, I'm going to assume that this is inside of draw and we've already taken care of things like creating the graphics window and setting a background color. I'm also going to reuse my routine draw bear from the translation video. You may remember that's nothing more than a call to begin shape, a whole bunch of calls to vertex, and then a call to end shape. And that just draws the bear as a series of straight lines. So let's see how this program creates this picture. The first thing we need to do is translate the coordinate system so it's at the base of the first bear. You can see here that I eyeballed it, and I came up with numbers of 95 on the x-axis and 105 on the y-axis. So let's go ahead and do that. Here are my blue arrows. I can find their intersection, and I'll move the coordinate system to that intersection point. Great, now we're done with the translate, and the coordinate system is where we want. Let's look at the next line, and that tells us to draw the first bear. So let's do that. There's the first bear. Now I need to move the coordinate system. And you can do this just by eyeballing it, or you can get out a ruler and measure it. Somehow you have to get these numbers. 
I measured this using a ruler that I held up to the screen and decided it looked about 200 units to the right and about 45 units down. So those are the two little translation arrows. And if I move my coordinate system along those two arrows, it lands right where I want it to be. Now I need to rotate it. By how much? Well, again, I measured it. I got my little protractor and I held it up to the screen and I said, that looks like about 22 degrees to me. So to rotate by 22 degrees, I call radians to convert it to radians. And then I call rotate and that causes the coordinate system to be rotated by 22 degrees. Now I'm ready to draw my bear because I'm in the right place. I draw my new bear. The bear we had before is still there. He doesn't get changed. And now we have a second bear. Now it's time to move on to the next one. First thing is translate. Remember, we always translate with respect to the coordinate system itself. So we're gonna move some direction along the red arrow and some direction along the green arrow. I finally discovered that by moving 205 units along the red arrow and 25 units along the green arrow, I landed right in the middle of the next coordinate system, right where I wanted to be. Then I measured the amount by which I wanted to rotate, and I discovered that was about 14 degrees. So I rotate by 14 degrees, putting my coordinate system where I want it, and now I'm ready to draw my final bear. I draw the bear, and I have the picture I was after. I had to measure these angles because the curve of the hillside is something that I drew freehand. You'll find when writing code, you can often use something like a loop variable to control how many degrees or radians you rotate at every step. Keep in mind that just like translation, when you do rotations, you have to repeat them for every frame. Every time draw begins, the coordinate system is in the upper left X pointed to the right, Y pointed down. Let's use our new rotation skills to create this little animation. There's not much to it. It's just a bear walking around a world, but it's very easy to make now that we know the right transformation techniques. It's always good to start with a sketch. So here I've drawn my world and I have one dark bear at the top. On every frame, I just rotate a little bit and draw the bear in the new position. So. As the frames go by, the bear is always drawn in a slightly new angle, and he looks like he's walking around the world. So here was my technique. At the beginning of every frame, remember the origin always starts in the upper left, X pointed to the right, Y pointed down. So the first thing I do is I translate to the middle of the screen, and I draw a green circle for the world. Then I figure out how much I need to rotate. On frame zero, I don't need to rotate at all. I draw a line up, in the negative y direction out to the edge of the circle. I translate by that direction. And once I'm there, I draw my bear. That's it. That's the end of the frame. Now comes a new frame. Draw gets called. As always, the coordinate system starts up in the upper left. So first thing I do, I translate into the middle of the screen and I draw the circle. Now I figure out how much I need to rotate and it's going to be some amount. So I rotate the coordinate system by whatever number I like. I'm just multiplying frame count by some very small number like 0 0.02. Now I have my angle and I do just what I did before. I move away from the center towards the edge of the world by moving in the opposite of the Y axis. Once I'm up there, now I'm in the right position and orientation. All I have to do is draw my bear. Now we have a new frame as always. Draw begins in the upper left. So the first thing we got to do is translate down to the middle of the screen. I draw my circle and now I figure out how much I need to rotate. Well, I'm just multiplying some number by frame count. It's going to be larger than it was last time. So around and around we go. We just hand rotate a larger angle and we do the very same thing. Just translate in negative Y out up to the surface and I draw my bear. So here's the code. Here's the whole program. Setup does the usual stuff. The first thing in draw is I compute the angle. That's just frame count times some number. And I just played with it until the bear seemed to be walking at a nice pace. 0 0.02 worked on my computer. The bigger this number, the faster the bear goes around the world. So just play with it until it looks nice to you. I set the background color and then I translate half the width and half the height. So I'm now sitting in the middle of the screen. I set the fill color and the stroke and I draw a circle. 
Notice that the center of the circle is at zero, zero, so it's centered in the middle of the screen. Now I rotate by the angle we just computed. I translate my way up to the surface, turn off the stroke, set up a nice brown color, and I draw the bear. The beauty of this is that we aren't doing any math. Processing is doing everything for us. All we have to do is call translate, then rotate and translate again, and we get a bear that's moving around a circle. Of course, you can do much more interesting and complicated examples. I kept this very simple so you can see how little is required of you to make things move and rotate on the screen.